Hello, so today I'm going to talk about or introduce an African species opposed to the normal South American species I talk to. So this is the African brown knife fish, African knife fish, um, I think those are the common names, but the scientific name, the binomial name is Xenomistus nigari. And it's a species of knife fish, knife fish in quotation marks, because it's not really the knife fish we know about. They are in the family Notopteridae, along with clown knives, the knife, and also elephant noses, Memoridae. And they're all in this order known as Osteoglossiforms, which is also shared with Arwana. And Osteoglossiform is known as the bony tongued fish. True knives, though, are exclusive on the other side of the world to South America and in the order Gymnotiform. These are more closely related to catfishes, Cyproniforms, which are carps, goldfish, minnow, but also Carisiforms as well, which is tetras and piranha, stuff like that. So they're actually completely not even closely related and this body form is just convergent evolution which makes it so interesting to look at if you compare them to normal um, or traditional knife fish the gymnotiforms they do look similar but they look so different in many other ways and they act completely different as well so Xenomistus nigari originates from Africa particularly widespread across West Africa focusing more in the Congo Basin, so the Congo River Basin. And I particularly wanted to show also the difference in locality between a lot of people associate um, Africa with the Rift Valley, but these fish are from the Congo, so more softer waters. And the Rift Valley just has that specialist geography that makes it, a uh, geology, so that makes it the water the way it is whereas um where it's more like it's more hard and stuff like that whereas this region there as you know mrs nigawa comes from will be more um softer water and more sort of maybe a bit more like south america if we think about it that way and other fishes that they're actually found with though they're actually found more closely with synodontis from this region no, a lot of synodontis aren't found in the Rift Valley and many aren't adapted for harder water anyway but also many uh, West African cichlids, Polypterus, um, which are birches um, and many different puffer fishes, quite a few puffer fishes are known as Congo puffers so Tetradon Shatadenai would be one example so they're found alongside some of these maybe, maybe not exactly but it does make it a little bit, um, it does make them as an example quite interesting but also I wouldn't exactly compare them or place them together they might not actually do well together and as I just show you this is the map of the localities that they've been recorded at least in uh, GBIF um, which shows where they've had uh, sightings, captures, um, stuff like that of the of Xenomistus nigari So here we have uh, two examples of Xenomistus nigari. Um, they're not, I wouldn't say they're entirely fully grown, but you can see that sort of very typical gymnotiform um, body shape, but they're not actually gymnotiforms. Um, if I compare to gymnotiforms, so we have here, this is a gymnotus, gymnotus javari, and you can see they do look very similar and this is another one, I cannot remember the genus name. They aren't in the best condition, I'm afraid. You can see they have actually got scales. It's not the easiest to see on these guys. And then here's one of the sort of elephant nose like um, gymnotiforms. But if we compare just even in that body shape, there is a lot of similarities, but they have got this like hump. So it's difficult getting the right camera angle. Uh, there. They have got that humped back. It's quite a deep body. Um, oops, sorry, that just knocked the microphone. Um, 
as you can tell I'm not feeling that well today um, just trying to, uh, it's difficult when you've got a camera position actually let me so if we look here you can see that really deep body shape and it does kind of curve so it has got a curve and it does curve upwards slightly at the tail the difference I'd say if you look at the tails is well I don't know if you can see it both of them have these um, the anal fin that extends and then upwards they all have pectoral fins uh, the main difference between these guys and the Afas is that these um, uh, Xenomistus Nagari don't have that dorsal fin and I'll say, oh, yes, they are electric fish. But the main difference is, is look at that eye size. That eye is massive in compare. There we go, massive in comparison to compared to even Gymnotus. And definitely towards these other ones, which really almost, you could say, they don't even look like they have an eye at all. All have a base of, it looks like it could be very reflective. And in fact, in... Um, See, the Mr. Snigari, it is reflective. Um, and in the dark, you can see like cat eyes. So they're very much adapted for dark conditions using electricity to see. But also that little glimpse of light that potentially could be. They do swim very much like gymnotiforms, uh, undulating this anal fin. Um, but they're still very different. You can't really see it, but they do have... Um, I think it would be the nares that very front forwards facing. Unlike gymnotiforms, if I try and open up, I would say the a lot of gymnotiforms have very restricted mouth movement, whereas these guys, it is very much like their relatives, the arowana, as in it it can it can open quite far and go out a bit more, whereas a lot of gymnotiforms don't. So these guys, you know, Mr. Snigari, they are not, <laughs> it's just making sure there's a distinguished difference between them. But they are very interesting fish to look at and almost you can see that convergent evolution from Africa compared to South America. They aren't closely related at all. And it's just interesting to compare. These guys, they all have that lateral line but these guys use slightly different and not, I would say, as adapted to electricity. But they still very much use it. And they're just, if we turn around, you can see that body shape. And it's very much almost like a crossover between quite a few fishes. And you can see that it's a very close body shape or head shape towards that Afa, the clown knife. A sort of one that's a lot more traditional fish shape compared to the diversity we see in genode forms, which is a much bigger category. Many species, there's only one. So finally, I'm just going to talk about care of Xenomistus nigare in captivity. So they are wild caught and that is um, sort of worth bearing in mind if you want to keep them. But it doesn't really, I don't think it really affects ease or difficulty of care in any way. So they do go to around, you're looking at about sort of 25 centimetres, although not all tend to reach that size. Um, and they can be, I find them quite rapid growers at first. They're very willing to eat, which is brilliant. So if I just, I'll talk about water parameters quickly, a soft, more acidic water would be best. They don't mind low or higher flow rates. Um, and the adaptation they can actually take in atmospheric air so you'll notice they will go to the top occasionally so they can deal with lower oxygen levels generally you'll want around 25 to 28 degrees centigrade is what i would aim for but they are really intolerant should the heater really go too high even though they've got the ability to take in atmospheric oxygen they don't seem to do well at high temperature like really high well above 30 um, they are set up with loads of hiding places, uh, dim lighting um, as a, well, an option of going in somewhere dimmer, somewhere to, they like to hide at times and that's really <coughs> important to recognise that they need those hiding places, those caves, those crevices 
and plenty of places to swim as well and different areas of different regions of higher flow maybe and then lower flow so they've got the options there um they are social they need to be in groups generally i'd recommend as many as possible mi a minimum of around ideally six um just treat them like a big tetra in a way even though they're not so have that group they can be particularly feisty on their own so that's um worth they're like one of those many fish uh black tailed red sharks would be another example of a fish that really does best with others um um others of its own kind in the right amount otherwise they can be a little bit more feisty and when it comes to tank mates obviously bearing in mind that mouth extends a lot bigger than you'd expect and they could eat smaller tetra easily but i would say there's no harm in keeping them with larger tetra species diamond tetra congo tetra would work something like that um i keep mine with laura cards there's no real worry unless it's fry which brings me on to feeding. These are the easiest, I think, of the knives, of any knife to feed. They will eat dry, they will eat frozen, they will eat live. And when I first got my first one, I was like, oh my god, I must only feed it live. It's going to be a fussy fish. And it just ate dry. It ate dry easily. So they're brilliant fish. They are carnivorous. Maybe insectivorous might be a better word, but they... Um, so just feeding them that, and bearing in mind they are electric fish, I'd try and, I don't know, if there's a way of reducing any sort of electromagnetism, like um, that electrics produced in the tank, that would be really amazing. Just because if you think about it, it's like a sonar and um, cetaceans, which are whales, dolphins, porpoise. Um, uh, so kind of like that, that's just the suggestion, but... Oh, they would work well, I think, in the planter setup. They don't dig. They're very chilled. They can be really shy, and they take a while to warm up to people, but they are probably the best knife fish around, even if they're not a true knife fish. At least you can say they've got electric abilities. Unlike, I think it's clown knife fishes don't have any. So maybe look at Congo fishes. Nothing predatory. I would definitely not keep them in puffers, and definitely not smaller fish either because these mouths extend they can jump i don't know what triggers them to jump because i've only had one jump one when i chased it but I ha they have been known to jump between tanks they are getting less common but they're not the price tag isn't that high compared to some knives so these guys you're expecting to pay anywhere between i'd say seven to fifteen pounds twenty pounds um but their price tag, obviously, with COVID and them being pretty hard to find these days, I'd say, is less common. They are probably one of my favourite knives and they're absolutely brilliant. And they're one that gets so little credit. I know they're not as striking as that black ghost knife fish. But these are social species. You can see them interact with each other. And I'm going to stop waffling. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, uh, subscribe, comment, like, whatever. Anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye.